session of programming on the game Grotto. Um, Wiley asked that I prioritize um, getting this thing ready for deployment. He's going to be deploying it on a digital ocean droplet and uh, he wants to use Docker for that. So I already have the starting point for a Docker file. So today I'm going to go through the concerns, or the DevOps concerns, um, for getting this thing actually delivered. So uh, let's start by getting the repo uh, up to date. I'm sure he's worked on it in the intervening days since I last worked on it. So let's pull. And here I'm using Sublime Merge. And then let's check out main. Oh, it doesn't like it because I've made changes to my database since then. So this is one of the things that I'm going to address today. Um, right now, the database is being shipped with the repo. And that's, that's kind of problematic. Um, it's, it's at least unconventional. I don't know if problematic is the right word. It's unconventional. So what I intend to do here is to subtract that from the database. For now though, to deal with this immediate problem, let's, um, let's stash my changes. Let's pull again. Let's check out main. Main is behind origin main, so I'm going to pull again. That'll actually check out all of this stuff and catch me up to um, origin. Now this stash is just the database, so I'm going to drop that stash because I don't need my database to be part of. I'm fine using the database that Wiley ships for now. Um, okay, so with that in mind, Let's go have a look. Let's, let's make a branch for ourselves, actually. Here we seem to be DevOps. Concerns. Um, and let's pop over and let's have a look at the folder structure. Actually, the best place to look at that is over here. So if I tree this, you can see there's you know, a bunch of bunch of stuff in there that doesn't really need to be in there, um, which we can deal with as well as we do this sort of restructure. But notice that the Docker file and Docker Compose, they are, um, right now they're outside of the project directory. The project directory is this grotto um, and that's where all the Django apps live. Now, this is um, um, this is totally functional. Hang on, I'll turn off my air purifier. That's better. So this is totally functional, but it's kind of hard from a DevOps perspective because you end up getting um, sort of meta code or meta config you know that's like how the container is configured and how your environments are configured and all those things and mixed in with the code like with the actual source of the project so that's like that's like not normal uh, it makes things a little bit harder to to like keep track of. Like for instance, here the requirements.txt is within the. It's like at the same level as manage.py, so it's just it's just kind of like mm, this should be up a level. This requirements.txt should be up one level because uh, because it's saying like what's required for the project. It's not how the project runs. It's like what what the project needs to run. So we're going to just sort of clean this up a little bit um, and add a tier to um, add, a, add like another layer of folder in here to contain all of the, the, the project source code. 
Now, in addition, notice that I have my own um, my own infrastructure here. Like this is these are files for me that pertain to this project. They don't necessarily belong within the repo for the project. Um, notice also, I don't think it shows it here. Um, let me let me see. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a, a lot of phlegm to cough up this morning. Uh, so I want to show directories only, D, and I want to show all because I want dot files to show as well. So let's try tree A, bingo. Um, <laughs> Oh wow. What's this? Oh, okay. That's our dot get folder. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to show. I wanted to show that the 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 actual repo here is the project directory for Django. And that's really what I'm aiming to fix with all this. Um I want to have that repo have some extra stuff that isn't just the Django app. So um, let's start doing it here. And actually, I'm going to start doing it here. Uh, I'm going to make a. So where where am I now? I'm I'm in what I want to be my um, my project directory, and then inside of that, I want to have the repo. So r right now I have Grotto that is the um, that is the repo proper and will remain the repo proper. But what I want to do is go one step inside of that. So let's see the into Grotto. Oh my! And let's make a new a new folder called Source. Mictor. SRC. So this is, um, is, I'm calling this source so so that it's delineated as the source code, and I'm going to move uh, character builder, grotto, map builder. I don't think pre-Django scripts needs to go in there. Um, I'll leave that out. I'm going to leave requirements out. Static and templates all go in. So those are all going to go into the source. So we got a little bit cleaner now. I'm going to move pre Django scripts to, um, my goodness, uh, what am I going to call it? Um, pre Django scripts. I just wanted to not have a space in it. <coughs> so. This is looking a little bit better. db.sqlite should be in there as well. So let's move that db.sqlite into source. So now our tree, it should still have the git folder, the actual repo proper in the current directory. Good. And it should have Django. Good. Th that'll probably go away. Eventually, I'm guessing, because we, we won't need them anymore. Um, and then character builder, grotto maps. OK, so everything seems fine there. So let's think about the next thing. I can, now that there's some like delineation, I can move the Docker Compose and Docker file into Grotto. And then from here, everything is right. I've got my project stuff, the, you know, any 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 stuff that's for me only that should never be in the repo. And then if I go into Grotto, the repo proper, I've got all of the stuff that the the source code might need and we might have other folders here like something about hosting or something about um, for instance in, in other projects that I work on I have a, like an AWS folder 
at the same level as source. Um, and you might have a test folder at the same level of source, and you might have a doc folder at the same level of source. All things that are related to the project. They're related to the source code, but they are not the source code. Um, excuse me, I'm pouring some water into my cup. And uh, oh, manage.py should also be in source. Let's move that. Uh, manage.py source. So you, I think you can mess with where manage lives, but manage should be along with the source. So we're looking better here. Let's see what this looks like from the repo perspective. I should have used git move to do all those moves because it's it's going to be. Uh, whoa, I did not. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to guess that all of these are just the moves that I've been doing. Yeah, a bunch of untracked files. Let's stage all. stage all okay so we got a lot of staged files a lot of stuff moving here um, let's have a look at uh, yeah it didn't do a great job okay it's doing fine with a lot of these though yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't I'm trying to not lose history That's a weird one. Yeah, okay, so all that looks fine. So this is just a basic restructure. Um, and while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and not add in the Docker file and the Docker compose. Let's unstage those things. Yeah, let's unstage Docker Compose. Let's unstage. Where's Docker? There it is. Unstage Docker file. database showed that it was not moved it showed that it was uh, deleted so I want to make sure that the database is there yeah this was just showed as deleted um, So where where is it now? Okay, there it is. Doing these big changes to a repo is it's hell on the history of the repo so I really f think it's a, a good idea to um, um, to start your project with a strong a well laid out repository um, just makes life a bit easier so that you don't have to have these sort of major history changes in the middle of your 
in the middle of your code base. Okay, so let's um, let's commit this. And that gives us a fresh new lease on life. We've got our. It's probably easier to show here. This is my project directory. It has my to-do list. It has my Sublime project. It has my Sublime workspace as well. That's hidden. Uh, and then inside here, I've got a folder for the source, which is where all the stuff that we generally expect to mess with lives. And then we've got the prior art. And now let's, uh, let's get attributes. Okay. Get ignore. Okay. I want to go ahead and um, I want to try to get rid of all the PyC files. So uh, let's try. I'm just going to try get rm star star PyC. Oh, I'm not in the Git repository because I'm in my project directory here. So let's cd into just lowercase quadro. And let's try that thing again. It's going to match any files. Star, star, slash, star. I see. Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to have to locate these things manually to get rid of them. Uh, that's kind of annoying. So let's do a bind. to remember this. just yeah okay it's just out of order I need to put the dot first dot being the starting point you are okay I think I can xargs that into to get rm. You know what? I can just rm them. What? Rm? What? Del. Hmm. So exec. I'm just gonna delete them. Permission denied. Freaking kidding me, man. Oh, okay. Well, let's just get rid of all the PyCache folders then. So 
that should give us some stuff that we did here. <coughs> Didn't. It should. Have I been dreaming? Have I dreamt? Yeah, there's freaking PyC files up in. Oh, well. This guy moved. Oh no, I bet they didn't get moved because the get ignore file asks to not see them. Okay, so I think I killed two birds with one stone. No probs. Um, yeah, there's no movement of the pie cache stuff. DS store also went away. So this was nice. It got rid of all of the files that shouldn't be in the repo. Like the database. Dot files. Generally, did we lose anything else? No, it looks like everything else here is a is a rename. Let's check on that. Could have been more um, precise about this. All right, this was actually a really good thing to do. My thinking is that the get ignore file was created after the first few commits were made, and therefore. A bunch of stuff like the PyC files just didn't they didn't get like they made it in and never got cold out so getting rid of those makes the repo a little bit cleaner awesome love it um, okay so then now that the repo is in more or less a clean state let's go ahead and update the docker file to reflect the changes as well as docker compose and then I'm gonna just while I'm here update this as well oh wow what happened there uh, no, it's because my case and sensitivity is off so I don't think I've mentioned it before on these streams I'm using sublime text 3 and Often, very often, I use the multiple cursors feature there, and I, um, I just can't recommend it enough. If you think you could benefit from, or uh, if you're a developer, I know you would benefit from multiple cursors. So, whichever editor you have, um, let me make this a little bit bigger for your sake. Whatever editor. supports multiple cursors you you're you're doing yourself a disservice by not using them so um, oh my that's not what I wanted to do um. <clears throat> So, anyways, on to what we were doing next. Yeah, I fixed these two commands so that we could, um, so that we could use them more or less seamlessly in the future without it being a concern, just given the changes that I made. And then I want to um, update the Docker file. Docker file here. It only needs to change because we updated where some stuff is. Right? So, oh man, what just happened? Just keep pasting here. Um, so I want to, I still want to pipe requirements.txt 
txt into place. Uh, I'm going to be kind of sloppy in the container. It's going to end up in app source. I don't really care. It's not, not a big deal where that ends up. I can delete it after we're done with it and it wouldn't be an issue. In fact, that's, that's probably what I'll do. Um, so I already was using a source directory in the container rather in the image um, so I don't have to change that very much but let's look at where requirements lives according to the repo this is the top level grotto so requirements now lives at the top level so I can get rid of that Pow. I can get rid of or rather not get rid of this I can change this to source so that I'm copying this folder into the image I can I can remove is remove a directory rm delete uh, so I suppose I can run M app source requirements.txt not that it matters um, just cleaning up some vestiges if I'm wanting to make this image actually small then I'd start using a multi-stage build where we um, use a, a bloated image to build the wheels and then we use a less bloated image to actually run the app um, not to that stage yet though so I'm just gonna leave it be like this um, cool so docker compose early optimization is is not something that you should be trying to do when you're building uh, when you're uh, you know, building an application right just build it the fastest and easiest let the bottlenecks in your either your process or your your actual application uh, expose themselves over time and address them when they come up trying to guess what your bottleneck is going to be before you hit a bottleneck is like a huge waste of time so uh, avoid it if you can um, so here likewise in docker compose I'm um, updating the directory that is piped into the image or rather the running container as a volume uh, so this all should work now um, I'm gonna ship with the docker compose file um, I want I'm gonna also ship with a um, Um, I want to ship it with a make file here. A, a make file is advantageous because it, it lets me put all of the essential commands into um, a, a single place for any other developer to benefit from or for myself to benefit from as well. So let's do this. Let's make a make um, save a make file. It's right there by my uh, Docker file, and wait, is that is make file the right name for that even? Pretty sure it is. Yeah. Default named make file. Okay, so maybe I should make it capital. lowercase is fine so let's I, I you know my make files are really simple there is like uh, a lot that you can do in a make file um, I haven't found the need for any of those really really complicated or you know for anything more than just the very simplest functionality of the make file so I don't know 
I don't know how to. I'm not a make file guru. I can't. Uh, I can't make them do really interesting things. But what I can do is make them init an app, run an app. Uh, you know, those those very simple things. So let's let's just do a run, a run directive here, um, and let's check out. I know. <laughs> yeah, Git isn't, or I'm sorry, uh, Wikipedia isn't the best for syntax um, uh, um, uh, reference, but uh, I guess it works on a pinch. So use a colon here. Uh, it's really important that these are actual tabs and not spaces. So um, be sure that that is the case. Is recognized that this is a make file and has uh, using the appropriate formatting so uh, generally what I've just been using is docker with D to make it detached uh, and then if you put a, an at sign a monkey tail at the beginning it suppresses the output of the command itself so it just like does the thing um, rather than printing docker compose up to the screen and then doing the thing um, so there's a, a few other, I'm gonna blow my nose real quick, I'll mute to do that. Okay, so I'm also going to um, um, gonna make a directive for, for migrations. And whenever you type that on the command line, it's gonna look like make migrations. So um, that will render out to that. Um, I would love, to, love, love to do this in a uh, Docker Compose. Actually, you know what? Let me. I think I can do that through Docker Compose. I need to check the docs real quick. Um, yeah, I should be able to run a one off command. So I don't need to override the entry point because the entry point is good for now. Um, but let's actually think about that. Um, so at this, yeah, okay. So we're preparing this thing to do the interwebs. The, the wide world at large. So, um, it's not, we're not going to be using manage.py run server to, um, to actually deliver this app to the world. Like, that's just not going to happen. Um, so, it's time here to have a, what, we, what we're going to call an entry point script something that's going to uh, trigger behavior um, based on um, based on you know based on a, a more complicated script than just invoking manage.py uh, not to say manage.py is not a complicated script um, and that the entry point that we make is going to be more complicated than it right it's going to be vastly simpler than manage.py, but it gives us the the custom behavior that we're looking for here. So I'm going to close out some of these files that should have been closed out before I started. And I don't know why this is I think I just hit. Oh yeah, it doesn't like it because it changed. 
feels about the same. Oh god. Oh jeez. Right, before I do anything in my make file, I'm wanting to make sure that it's accurate. Right, that I'm actually doing the thing. So, let's think about the differences in behavior that we're gonna want for a dev versus a production environment. So, for dev, it's fine to always do python manage.py run server. That, that's what it's for, right? So this command that I'm setting here um, is, is just fine for a dev environment. But for a for production environment, um, let's actually just start writing a script over here. So let's save it as in here. .sh. And um, bash if oh if uh, I'm just gonna consult something that I wrote before. The syntax, the particular syntax for bash scripting is, uh, you know, I don't use it every day. So remembering that it's double brackets for an environment variable is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to have to think about that all the time. So, you know, if we have dev as our, um, as our, uh, um, Well, what am I even trying to say here? Whew. Yeah, if dev is our app environment, right? Like if we're working on our local machine, then doing Python image.py run server 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0000 uh, is, is perfectly adequate. However, LF, if we are In a production environment, then we might want to do something entirely different. Um, the the thing that we are going to do is um, is actually to use G Unicorn as the WSGI server, um, or the ASGI server, perhaps WSGI. Sorry, uh, so. We're gonna say um, so let's think about what this is actually gonna be called. So we need to be able to reference this. Um, that's what we need to, to pump into G Unicorn so that it knows what to actually run. Um, oh, what just happened? Did I, have I slept? Okay, this is entry food. Let me, I don't know what the hell. Uh, take you, put you there. Okay. Um, so that is in a folder called Grotto and a file called WSGI and it
they will name like application. Yeah, that's what GML Core can run. And I want to bind that to a specific port. And um, the web server, whatever we're using there, I'm guessing it's going to be Nginx, could be Apache, is going to um, pick up that bound port and forward traffic to it. Um, or proxy traffic to it. So this is a pretty simple thing to do. It's not um, it's not complete either. Uh, because there's a lot of other behaviors that we want to that we want to um, um, sort of encapsulate here, right? As we start the container. So essentially, every time I start the container, I want to migrate. Py migrate. That are supposed to happen at the start of any of any uh, container. Um, right now, the the image that's being built is only used for the app proper. So there's no there's no other considerations um, at play there. So I'm bringing this up because um, if you have if you were using um, celery to facilitate queuing, then um, you'd also need a worker container, and you might also be using like Django Celery Beat to facilitate periodic tasks, uh, running, and things like that. Um, that this, if you were doing that, then you would be using your same image. Um, as both the app, the worker, and the beat. And in that case, you wouldn't necessarily want migrate to run all the time for each of those. So you might have to you know, scope this carefully to make sure that you're only running migrate on the app instance of the uh, container. Uh, but there isn't any kind of concern like that here, so um, we should be able to just do that. Okay, I'm confident with that. <clears throat> now let's update this um, we want to uh, ex execute using the shell app entry point point dot sh and in order to do that we need to um, Well, we need to put that entry point script into place, right? There's no, in, that hasn't been copied. That doesn't live in source, so it didn't get copied over. So let's, um, let's copy that over. Entry point.sh, it's gonna go to app. Um, and then we need to make it executable as well. So run chmod. So, um, this all seems good. The Since we're getting ready for production, the last thing or the next thing that I want to think about is to um, 
not run this container as root. Or not have the running the, the, the user running in this container as root. So let's create a user run. Uh, so this is an Alpine based image, so add user is the appropriate command. as worker. Okay, so now that entry point script will execute as worker, which will prevent um, which will prevent the container running as root. Cool. Um, we have entry point. We have So Docker Compose, the command does not need to um, be set anymore, but we do need to set a, um, a variable, an environment variable. So I think it's environment. environment. It could just be env. Let me check that. environment in full text. So I'm going to say app env is dev. And that should make everything work as we expect in our dev environment here. Now whenever I go to start the um, image running on the um, on the, the prod environment I'm uh, I'm gonna have to set that environment variable sort of explicitly uh, that's not a problem it's just something to do um, <laughs> So let's look at settings and let's see what sort of stuff needs to change to get this thing absolutely ready. So first off, security warning, keep the secret key used in production secret. So that's not the secret key we're going to use in production. Nice try hackers. OS dot um, environ dot get. I want to get a secret key. That should be a string. Oh god. Um, and we'll just keep that, you know, sort of generated one as the default. And then I want to do this, a similar thing here. Um, OS. Oh, Mr. B. So for debug here, we're going to do os.environ.get and debug. Uh, I want to do debug is uh, true. Oh my.
And we're back. Sorry about that. Brief parenting interruption. Um, so here I'm going to be checking on... So the thing about environment variables is that they're all strings. So it works fine for the secret key to be a string. Like that's what it, that's what we want it to be. Um, but debug should be a Boolean value and all non-empty strings evaluate to true. So as I come over here and say something like uh, debug equals true, um, that is, um, that's gonna come through as a string. Right, so I'm, I need to be careful over here as I interpret that coming in. So I want to uh, do this kind of uh, a thing here. Right, this little this little bit of jujitsu. Um, I'm going to get the string value of the environment variable, which, if we want debug. To be true will be true, like the, the word true. Um, I'm going to lowercase that just so that it's consistent. So that if somebody, you know, some somebody who's like a JavaScript developer or whatever types in lowercase true, um, I want that to be interpreted as true. Um, so I'm lowercasing whatever I get and I'm comparing that to the word true, the string true. And if they match, then that gives us a Boolean true value. Otherwise, it's false. So if, um, if uh, um, any other thing here than true appears, lowercase or uppercase, case insensitive, so you could do that and it should still work but if you type in false whatever other non-true value value you put that'll evaluate to a debug is false so this is just a way to do it um, I could sort of change the behavior here um, so that it's by default debug is turned off and you have to sort of explicitly turn it on um, and actually that that's a bit safer mode to run in um, because if your production environment, if you fail to set the debug environment variable, then debug will be false by default. Um, but I kind of want the like the the onus of good of good uh, uh, DevOps is on the production environment, not on the um, not on the dev environment. So. Um, yeah, that's that's at least my philosophy there. I like it to be as easy as possible for the developer to get their development on, and then hopefully there's enough structure in place to uh, to carefully deploy the production environment. Um, as I'm explaining it, I, it's causing me to you know, rethink that philosophy a little bit but uh, I'm gonna stick with it for now. Um, uh, so we should start thinking about what our dev deployment is going to look like. I'm gonna make a bit of documentation, make a readme here. Of it 
somewhere over here in code. Yeah, okay. So you do pipes and then you do the thing. Um, Mr. B, are you are you wanting a pouch? Okay. Let me pause for one second. And I'm back. So I want to just express what express what environment variables exist here. So app in Choices, dev or prod. Um, the other, or another, is secret key, which um, Django secret key. Right now, that's all we have as far as um, environment variables go. But I want to keep track of them as we add new ones. Um, so I talked to Wiley about the database situation. Um, we're no longer shipping a database with the repo. Um, I want to, and he wanted to stick with SQLite. I want to be sure that the database. Um, are you done with this? You want to finish here? I'll help you finish it. We want to be sure that the database um, is persistent in the production environment, at least until until it's explicitly deleted, right? So I'm gonna do one more thing with this Docker Compose to uh, to check uh, to to ensure that. Um, specifically here, I'm going to. Um, Actually, I don't think it comes into play in the dev environment at all because the SQLite database lives in source. Yeah, so this works fine for that case. Um, the case where it doesn't quite work right is in production. We haven't gotten there yet. We'll have to be, be sure to set our volume well for that production deployment. Um, so nothing messing with the database environment variables. Generally you would you would have a, a database URL or some some set of database um, environment environment variables. Um, everything looks fine. Yeah, everything looks fine. I'm gonna fix up the usage of Baster, um, just because uh, Django has switched to um, Django has switched to um, using pathlib dot path, which is pretty great actually. You just join paths like that. You take the existing path object, and the slash has been redefined as an operator there that lets you put directories together. So I updated that in a few places. 
all at once. I want to make sure that I didn't break anything there. I did break a thing here. Okay. Perfect. Now, um, I think that's I think that's all we have as far as environment variables go. Um, next up, we want to installed. It's not strictly a requirement for the repo. Right, like if you're running in, if you have append set to dev, then you don't need gunicorn at all. Um, so you could do a an install step here. Um, I you could do an install step here, adding it as a requirement. You know, just doing another Python thing, but that kind of puts it in a weird place. It's actually not that big of a deal in my mind to have um, to have it here. Sublime text plugin that gives requirements.txt awareness. So I was able to sort of auto complete based on all the PyPy packages that exist and then automatically get the latest version. I recommend that entirely because uh, it just makes it so, you know, like I don't have to go over to PyPy and get the right name and all that. I just, uh, just hit the, the shortcut and off it goes. All right, so we've got that ready. We've got entry point prepared. We've got Docker file changed to hold the new entry point. We have, we're, we've got a Docker compose. It should work fine still. We're working on a make file. Um, so with this make file, um, I'm going to update this to use docker compose. This is kind of a, like, using the docker command outright is uh, is uh, undesirable for me. Docker commands get to be a bit of a, uh, um, they get a little verbose. So these, these wrappers are nice. So I'm gonna use, uh, actually, I'm gonna give these things a name. So this is gonna be Grotto. And then, This should work fine regardless. Of we should only be running it in dev, so you know, won't, won't matter too much. Actually, it might not even work in, in prod because we may not be using Docker Compose in prod to deliver the app. Um, but you know, I haven't, haven't seen what we're working with yet. So, um, it's convenient to have a logs target docker compose p grotto um, <laughs> Mr. B's making some background noises for you. Um, I will do logs for app. bit easier there. Um, there is, as of now, no initialization stuff that I've seen. Um, so in a lot of projects, you might have like an init target where you do some setup, right? Like you, you might need to create a super user. 
um, you might need to like initialize the database uh, um, proper, right? Like J Django will initialize a SQLite database for you, um, and it, it will it'll initialize a, a Postgres database for you as well. But the you might need to bring up the container for your Postgres database so that it can um, like be ready to be initialized by the application. So you might need to do that in advance if you're having an init step. Um, yeah, there's all there's all kinds of stuff that might be there. This project so far, so I'm gonna leave this off. Uh, what I do want to have is a uh, an opposite of stop or an opposite of run, so something like stop. Um, and I'll just steal this command and change this to down. Right now, that's um, those are the, the main ones that I can think about. Uh, let's actually, there might be one more. Migrate, migrate is now done. Whenever we run the 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 thing, uh, whenever we run the the container, so I don't think we need that one explicitly. Um, now we've seen that this thing takes about a year to build to to go through the actual build step. Um, uh, while, while I'm thinking about it, let's make a build directive. Build should be able to do Docker Compose P. I don't think you need a P for, well, let's leave it, see what happens. So having this in place means that I should be able to just do um, make build. Yeah, it'll take me through all the things there. Yeah, it's gonna have to, to do all the, the build itself because that's a there's new new requirements in place, and it's a new. Oh no, it's not. Uh, well, the, this was new. I was moving it from a new place, so the, the it used the cache up to there. It couldn't use the cache beyond that. Okay, so. We'll let that build. I'll probably be done with this stream before it's finished building. We'll give it a few minutes. Uh, so that's going to be something that Wiley might have to think about. Um, if this thing takes 20 minutes to build, just because NumPy has a lot of um, NumPy has a lot of. Uh, uh, Operating system sort of requirements, and then spacey, spacky, whatever, whatever it's called. Um, this thing uh, has a huge, huge amount of build associated with it. So what I might suggest there is that we have a have a dependencies container or dependencies image that is independent of the app image that just already has sp spacky spacey whatever the hell installed in fact there may be let's actually look for that spacey is a python library or hub and c mr b you standing up on the bed no jumping on the bed buddy no jumping on the bed. No. Spacey. Oh. Ho -ho. All right. Let's see what we got here. Updated three years ago. Oh, okay. That's a little old. It's Spacey 206. Uh, that's not great. Let's look for Spacey again. Come on. by a REST API mm. and that might be updated seven months ago no overview great it's great Either. 
Okay, so what I was hoping to find was a maintained image that um, just gives you a Python Python 3 plus basic two years ago. Jeez. If it was if it was updated one month ago, I would be all about it. I'd be so totally all about it. Okay, so it's yeah, it's not great. It's better than nothing. Um, I wish it had pinned dependencies here. It would make it a lot more reliable. Um, so basically, what I think I'm going to do is. Um, just make a little precursor package. Okay. I'll put it under, uh, you know, uh, I'll give it to to Wiley so that I don't have to maintain it necessarily, or I can maintain it. Not a big deal. Um, basically, just have it keep up to date with Spacey. Do a Python three image. I'm not going to provide like you know the, the Python people. They just go whole hog wild on their uh, on the, the, the tags that they provide the number of builds that they do just whole hog wild I don't get it if I was them I'd be trying to try to cull that down but uh, I guess they're being cool with everybody and all their little their little uh, yeah look at all these tags just man so much build time um, yeah, if I was going to do this, I would just provide a, a small subset of these, maybe even just one, the latest 3.9 Alpine or whatever. But yeah, I'll have Spacey pre-installed, and that'll keep it a little lighter, at least on build time. Um, I'm going to just make that a new to-do. So what else do we need to do? I'm going to cut this stream in about 12, 15 minutes. Um, so let's think about what else we need to do just to get this thing humming for deployment. Let's recap what we've done. Um, and that might lead us down the path. Sorry, my chair is a little squeaky. Um, so we restructured the repo by uh, adding a folder in there to hold the actual source code. Um, we added in a Docker file, a Docker compose, an entry point, and a make file. So the Docker compose, I'm sorry, the Docker file is fairly simple. puts the app in place, it installs the um, operating system dependencies. <laughs> Mr. B. Oh, he's jumping on the bed again. Look at him jump. Um, it um, puts the uh, uh, Python dependencies in place, puts the app in place, puts a set of instructions to run the app sets the worker oh god sets the worker and then sets it running easy peasy docker compose is just changed for our dev usage here i haven't gotten to test it yet because the uh, container takes a minute to build a solid minute um, and then 
entry point sh is the rough instructions to run run the thing so this is somewhat productionized because we've told it that we want to use a production grade WSGI server um, and then our make file is coming together nicely with some simple things just to keep uh, just to make life a little bit easier readme readme is kind of uh, it's kind of potato quality right now uh, no, no big deal though we'll fix that up before we end the stream that's what we'll do in the last 10 minutes here um, also added a dependency for deployment settings just mainly getting these ready for deployment um, wow. I'll wow. talk to Wiley about using something like white noise to do static files management I don't think that he is doing that yet um, but it, it would be useful mr. B I can't I can't let you watch your cartoon right now I'm using my laptop okay no I'm sorry give me can you give me a few more minutes oh gosh oh geez oh geez we're getting into the putt putts he's giving me the putt putts okay I'm gonna put it on but quietly okay I'm gonna put it on, but really, really quietly. Okay, there we go. Um, you have to appease the child. So, um, what are we? What was I? What was I talking about? Right, I was gonna update README so that other people might know what the heck is going on here. Um, so, um, uh, da, 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 so, um, for uh, getting started. instance and browser to the post interact. Let's see what other stuff is in the make file here so we can completely document this thing. Oh. 
Windows. things um, I I'm going to provide a special command for, for super user here. Uh, yeah, actually, I think exec is better to use than run. just pattern out a few more of these things. Um, Django shell. Um, and then uh, we might want to get to the shell of the container itself. So I th think that's all I want to try to tackle today. I'm going to push these, at least commit these changes. And, and then I'll pick this up maybe Monday morning. Maybe a little later today. Before I drop off, I'm going to go ahead and check on the status. Okay, it's still building spacey. 
we'll let that keep doing its thing. Keep grinding on that. Um, and maybe on uh, Monday I'll do that uh, that precursor uh, image that we can build from. Uh, for the time being, let's stage all of these and then let's uh, come in. Push them. And I think that's all I have for this stream. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. If you uh, want to see more of this kind of stuff, then um, be sure you follow this channel. Also, find my stream or find my. Uh, find my uh, channel on YouTube by searching This Matters. Um, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.